Let's get started on the week one tasks where we're going to create a new document, add headings and add paragraphs. So fire up Axia RP and create a new file. In week two, three, four, etc., you'll be working iteratively, so you will be opening the previous week's file and saving it under a new name. I'll show you that next week. So let's start by naming page one. I always name it index because that's the default page that opens. You can also call it home. We'll add our widgets now. So this is in our widget library to the left. Let's drag over an H1. Now you notice I am very, very zoomed in at the moment. This is only 300 pixels wide. Um, what I can do is zoom out to show the full width. I'm using the space bar and dragging to get that where I need to be. Um, I recommend pulling over a, um, a guide so you can see 1366 pixels because that's what we're recommending for your computer screen view. Uh, it's close enough, 1368, because otherwise you have no idea how wide your page is um, when, with Axia because there's no fixed page width. So I've got my heading one. I want to rename that something relevant um, because you, if you drag across widgets and just leave them as heading one, two, three, that's just pushing all that work to the end of semester where you have to replace all of the text, far better to do it as you're going along. So if I'm doing a lifestyle website saying, hey, let's you know visit Seaford, it's a great place. Uh, so I will give it a relevant heading. There needs to be one H1 heading per page. H1 being the same as the HTML terminology because the purpose of Axia RP is so that you can then send that to a developer and they can build it into a real site. And for that to happen, they need to know exactly um, what your heading is supposed to be, H1, H2, etc. So there is only one H1 heading per page. That is good information design practice, good for search engine optimization and very good for accessibility. You can have a number of H2 headings, as many as you want really. This shows the different sections of the page. So I might say my first H2 heading, what's so great about Seaford? Okay, and then I might have another one further down the page and I'll just scroll. They are infinitely long, so you do not need to change the page side. You just add new content and I might say getting to Seaford for the second one. Scrolling back up again. Now I can bring over my H3 and this is what guides the user to the exact information they are after. So what's so great about Seaford? The beach. It's got a lovely, lovely beach there. Um, and then I might have another one. It's got, you know, sporting grounds there. Okay, and then getting to Seaford, I might have by train, because it's right on a train station, or I might have by car. Oops, scrolling down a bit. Let's see if this will align. There we go, by car. And now I can drag my, uh, my paragraphs across, you see we've got a paragraph widget too. Now, this brings me to an interesting point as I drag these paragraphs across. I'll just drag them up near the heading. So always make sure you, whatever uh, is owned by that heading, it's a little bit closer to that than anything else. Might move these up a little bit. There we go. Okay, so if you have a look at this lorem ipsum, and again, I recommend you type in real text. doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be good, in fact. It just has to be indicative of what you want on the page um, because otherwise it is really easy to accidentally submit a final website that has lorem ipsum on it in different places. So if I go to preview... It's squished everything. It's doing a couple of things weird. One is that it's centered, which it wasn't on the Axia site. And the second is that this text box is a lot narrower than what it was on our first design. So let's go here and find out why. Uh, okay, so if I go to Project Pale Style, Page, sorry, Style Manager, 
you can see page align is centered, browser only. So that's the first thing that makes a change from our workspace to our final website. And you can see browser only means it's not going to appear on our working space, it's only going to appear in the browser. I do recommend you leave it at centered because it looks a lot more professional um, rather than having everything squished to the left side. So I can click OK in that instance. Now the interesting thing about these paragraphs is that if I drag that and make it, look how wide I make that, let's preview it, it's made it a bit wider but not entirely. So I recommend, you know, you can go in here and actually change it using the um, numbers down here rather than dragging so you make sure they're all the right widths here. But what you will, whoops, I want 650, not 750. What you will need to do is test these basically. Go through, as you're designing, always preview it to avoid those sort of nasty surprises. So if I go to preview, it's looking better. It's still not as wide as it was, um, but it's a bit better than before. So that gives us a good start. So make sure you save this file, save as, you know, save it as week one um, and that way when you get to working on it next week you can open it and save it as week two and work on it gradually over the semester.